Okay, Math 30-1, Topic 5.4, Equations and Graphs of Trig Functions. Let's look at solving them. There's two ways of solving these, and it's going to be graphically as well as algebraically. So let's go through a couple of examples. Example 1, we're asked to solve a trig function in degrees. This function is 2 cos squared of x minus 1 is equal to 0 over the interval between 0 and 360 degrees. Well, first of all, let's solve by graphing. If we graph this, we're going to make the left side y1 equals to 2 cos squared x minus 1. y2 is equal to 0. Then we're going to find everywhere this inter graph intersects the x-axis between 0 and 360 degrees. So, if we plotted the points, you're going to see that the graph is going to have one, two, three, four different intercepts between 0 and 360. The first one's at 45, the second one's at 135, the third one's at 225, and the last one is at 315 degrees. Now, let's look at solution number two. Let's solve this algebraically. When we take our equation, we add 1 to both sides to get 2 cos squared theta minus 1 is equal to, or equals 1. Then we can divide both sides by 2. Now when we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get the cosine of x is equal to the positive or the negative of the square root of 1 half. Now this is going to be 1 over root 2, which we are going to convert to root 2 over 2 in positive and negative. Now cosine is going to be positive root 2 over 2 at 45 degrees and at 135 degrees and it's negative, well I should say it's positive at 45 and 315. It's negative at negative 130 at 135 degrees and 225 degrees. In example two, solve a trig equation in radians. Now, determine a general solution for this trig equation. Again, we're going to uh, solve it algebraically and graphically, and express our answers to the nearest hundredth. This tells a big clue as to we're not looking for exact answers in this case. So in solution 1 we can make y1 equals to 16 and y2 is equal to 6 cos pi over 6x plus 14 or we could subtract 16 from both sides and work with it that way. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve 16 from both sides so y1 is 6 cos pi over 6x minus 2, and y2 will just simply be equal 0. Again, we'll find all the x-intercepts <clears throat> here it just shows you what we were talking about as well, and find the intersection points that way. Well, if we graphed it, you'll notice over one complete cycle, or one period, there are two solutions, one at 2.35 and the other one at 9.65. Let's look at this algebraically. First of all, we are going to subtract 14 from both sides of our equation. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And now we're going to take the cosine inverse of both sides. The cosine inverse of 1 third and the cosine inverse of the cos of pi over 6. Well, on the right side, it just leaves us with pi over 6 because the cos inverse of cos is going to disappear. And the cos inverse of 1 third is 1.2309. Now I just have to divide both sides by pi over 6, and x is going to equal approximately 2.35.
Now that's one solution. And since cos is positive in quadrants 1 and quadrant 4, the second possible solution is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6. And therefore we're going to start again and say 1 third is equal to the cos of 2 pi minus pi over 6x. Again, take the cos inverse of both sides. Rearrange our equation so that we have positive pi over 6 on the left side. And you have 2 pi minus the cos inverse of 1 third over on the right. Did a double switch there. Now we can take and divide both sides by pi over 6. And that will leave you with x equals 12 minus 6 over pi times the cos inverse of 1 third and if you put that in your calculator you're going to get approximately 9.65 which is the other point. Now all we need to do is figure out the period. The period is 2 pi divided by b and b is pi over 6 so 2 pi divided by pi over 6 gives us a period of 12. So on our graph, notice in red, the point 0 and 12, that's where it starts to repeat. So now we can give a general solution. And that is that it's going to be 2.35 plus 12 n radians and 9.65 plus 12 n radians, where of course n is any integer. In our last example, we have to figure out a sine graph from this data. Draw a scatter plot using your calculator, put in the values into L1 and L2, drawing your scatter plot. Then we're going to determine from the graph whether it behaves like sine, negative sine, cos, or negative cos. And for our purposes and dealing with graphs like this, we're going to say it looks like a negative cos graph. Therefore, we need to find A, B, C, and D values for our data so we can plug it into our equation. D is the midpoint. That's the median. So if I take the max plus the minimum, divide it by 2, I'll get the middle. That's 12.585. Now if I take the max minus the middle, I'm going to find our amplitude. And that's 8.245. was our max, 12.585 was our median, our middle. Next, the B value. Well, 2 pi divided by B is the period. We know for the days of the year, the period will be 365. So when I calculate B, cross multiply and divide, B is going to be 2 pi divided by 365. Lastly, the C value. Our C value is going to have a value of negative 10 because the first day of our cycle, at the bottom of our graph, is going to be 10 days back from the beginning of the year. It's going to have a minimum on December 21st, which is day 355 out of, day, out of days 365 in a year. So the minimum of the graph has to have 10, 10 taken off of it. So therefore, there's our shift. Now when I put that all together, y is going to equal our a value, and it has to be negative cos, so it'll be negative 8.245 times the cosine of 2 pi divided by 365 times x plus 10. Oh, yep, plus 10. And then on the back end, it's going to be plus d, which is 12.585. Now, if you put that into y1, you should see this graph go through all of the points on your scatter plot. Again, the minimum 
or on day 355, is 10 days short of a full year. Your assignment is to do the U-turn worksheet in groups, and if you're finished that, you can go ahead and work on page 275, numbers 1 to 9.